Thank you, Lou. Just reminding everybody, and for those who don't know what tinnitus sounds like, this is what I've been told by my doctor and my ear, nose and throat specialist, that it's comfortable to live with, people cope with this and you'll be fine. I hope you can hear it. Listen carefully. It's happening in a minute. Can you hear? The day I knew, the day I first knew that I had a symptom known as tinnitus was one of the most despairing, frustrating and disappointing days in my life. I'd been experiencing a high-pitched, sonic, shrill, whistling noise in my head for about three weeks. This was in 2014. I didn't really know what was happening. I tried to work through it, sleep it off, and I tried to exercise my way through it. I was frenetic. I just thought I was going to explode with sound. I lost my sense of self. I didn't, I wasn't there. I was just sound. I was so frightened. I ran, I jogged, I swam, I hiked, I walked myself into a frenzy. I tried to relax, I tried to breathe, meditate, succumb, accept this alarming buzz in my head, but to no avail. Um, I experienced panic attacks. I was pushed to the very edge and I wasn't coping. All the exercise, I couldn't work through it. So I realized it was time to go for help and get on top of this, address it. And that was when I went to my doctor, my GP. I went in distressed. I came out doubly distressed. My doctor couldn't help me. Ah, tinnitus. Ah, yeah. Ah, oh, that's one one tough gig. She told me her grandfather had it, that he suffered terribly, complained all the time, and it drove him mad. It can, it can drive you mad, she told me, my GP. I really don't think these are the things that I should have been told. I felt that at the time. I thought, this is 2014. I shouldn't be hearing something like this coming from a professional medical person. I was frightened. I was at the very end of my tether. I didn't know how I could cope another minute. I went for help. I went to my GP because that's what we're told, go and see a GP first, and they couldn't help me. So I went in frightened and I was even more frightened. I wasn't coping and I realized that it was up to me that I was going to have to cope. So the story goes as it is for many, and I think you'll all understand this, Maxine and Andrew and all those listening, Daniel, is that I went to have MRIs, I went to my ear, nose and throat surgeon to make sure, Maxine, that I didn't have um, a neuroma or anything on in my ear causing this, this, this tinnitus that just arrived in my head from, from I don't know where. And in a way, I was sort of hoping, oh, look, look, in a way, I hope it's sort of a benign neuroma, they'll be able to cut it out and the tinnitus will go. And I couldn't believe how dismissive everybody was when the outcome was, um, and luckily, Maxine, for me, um, I, I didn't have neuroma, and my wonderful surgeon, my ear, nose, and throat specialist in Melbourne, one of the top of, in Australia, patted me on the knee and said that all the results were clear, and I had garden variety tinnitus, and I'd stop noticing it in time, and everything would be all right. People cope. People, people are fine with it. You'll be, you'll be fine too. I did have an audiology test and it showed that I had mild upper frequency hearing loss, but there was no mention of having a hearing aid or trialing one in case it might help my tinnitus and fill my brain with ambient sounds. And it is known now that um, if people struggle, struggle and suffer tinnitus that, and you have a mild hearing loss by wearing a hearing aid, 
it actually enhances ambient noises and it fills the, 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 the loss where you've lost your hearing and it can dampen the tinnitus. Not, none of that was told to me at all. Lack of communication, no information. I was told I'd cope, that I'd stop hearing sounds, but I wasn't told how. I wasn't given the tools. I wasn't ex explained any management strategies. I wasn't told who to see. It was causing me great mental and emotional angst. I wasn't told to see a psychologist or a behavioral cognitive therapist. I walked out of my ear, nose and throat surgeon's surgery and I stood on the main road on the footpath and I just thought, after all that, all those tests, all the questions, all the, all the money that I'd spent because hearing health, somehow ears aren't a part of health in Australia. And ears I have to pay and I don't get anything back um, from my private health cover. I can't believe it. I don't know why teeth and ears are not part of the, of the national health conversation. That has to be addressed. And I just thought I've, I've paid all that money. I've seen all these people. And here I am, isolated, my head's roaring, and I'm no better off than I was. And I thought, hmm, I actually got angry. I got cranky and I thought, this isn't right. This isn't right. So I've spent the last seven years addressing this wrong. And um, I'm, I've launched campaigns, My Earrings for Peace, where we, we, I thought I'll turn like you, Andrea, I want to turn this negative into a positive. Um, so I wanted to whirl some glamour. No one mentions tinnitus. And I just wanted to address this, this tinnitus. Why, why had I got to 55 years old and had not heard of tinnitus? No one had ever said to me that their, their lives are falling apart, that they had tinnitus. In fact, I actually think I thought tinnitus was a, was a foot fungal infection, which is tinea. I, I really didn't know about this word tinnitus, meaning to near, to ring. And people have been suffering it. Leonardo da Vinci, um, Plato, uh, way back, Pliny the Elder, they all wrote in ancient Greece about, and Italian, about this mosquito in their head, this noise. And I can't believe over these thousands of years that it's still not, not being addressed. It's not seen as a significant symptom. It's treated like a mere trifle, but it had me and I know when I say this, it has millions of others. So it's not just me. So if you are experiencing tinnitus and feeling isolated, please don't. But it had me thinking, you know what? If I die, I've had a great life. I've had a great life with a gorgeous family. Fulfilled most of the things, you know, and then I won't have to suffer this sound, this sound that drove me to despair. And that frightened me. I'm a positive person. I love life. I love people. But this tinnitus, this little benign buzz in the head, nonstop, 24-7, drove me to think very frightening thoughts of suicide ideation. That's when I went and had co behavioral cognitive therapy. I found Sound Fair back at the time. It was um, trading as Better Hearing Australia Victoria. I actually, I had to do all the work. I had to find everything. And it was hard. It was, I, I trawled through um, cures. I rang up people. If I paid $5,000 and I listened to this particular music, my tinnitus would go away. Um, I know a girlfriend did that. She said she was listening to Bach or Beethoven ad finitum with a buzzing noise in her head. And she said it was, she just felt better taking those sounds out of her brain and just coping with the tinnitus and not the bark and the Beethoven mixed around it. So it's been a shocking journey. It's been confusing. Um, and I'm very, very, very happy to throw all my energy uh, into um, growing awareness around the tinnitus condition and hearing loss. Hearing health has to be a national health priority. People, if you've got tinnitus, don't have any stigma. Talk about it. Ask your doctor for help. Doctors really want to help, but I don't think that there's enough education um, in their course when they're learning to become a GP. They don't have the time to discuss the emotional side of these things, that trauma that we bring to the doctor in 15 minutes 
the way we're in and we're out, we're in and we're out these days at our GPs, I really find that they are struggling to address um, symptoms and hearing loss and hearing health and other hearing conditions. So sound fair, thank you for everything you do. Hearing aids did help me. They've helped me on and off. I use them as a tool. I don't have them in all the time. Um, wonderful hearing apps like T-minus is an app I listen to. Um, and the, the creator of that has tinnitus himself. I'm not a great person to troll forums and online, um, I guess uh, I call them sort of complaint sessions, but there are some wonderful podcasts. The Tinnitus Sub Hub has a wonderful podcast where they go around and they interview researchers all around the world and we are kept up to date with the latest research and what's going on in the tinnitus sphere. So we need to make a noise. People with tinnitus don't suffer in silence. We don't have the luxury to anyway, do we? So thank you, Sound Fair, for tonight. Thank you, everybody. And Daniel, we're yet to hear your story, but we're all heroes, spelled H-E-A-R-O-S or E-S. And we're all heroes and keep up advocating. We have a right for peace for people who, who live with the auditory torment of tinnitus. It's a torment. And if there are any doctors listening tonight, please treat that patient with time, with respect. Go to the Tinnitus Australia website and find out the people who you can recommend that tinnitus client to. We all deserve peace. Thank you.